What's up internet, Jay Broadway here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to destroy your CPU and in the process, make a beautiful sounding pad. Here's what we're gonna be designing from scratch today. So we got a very CPU intense pad here with multiple uh, oscillators going on here. We got a noise oscillator, we got a synth oscillator sub and main oscillator. On the surface, it looks kind of complicated, but let me reassure you that really the stuff that we're doing in here is not really complex at all. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make this from scratch. So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, we're gonna start with a blank instance of phase plants here. Let's add in a wave table and we're just gonna leave it on the default sine wave. Next, I'm gonna add in a distortion. As you can hear, the distortion is not audible. That's because it's below this output module here. If I bring it above the output module, you can hear the distortion is actually taking effect, but uh, we actually wanna leave it beneath the output and you'll hear why in a minute. Next, we're gonna click this green plus button here and we're going to uh, modulate the phase of the sine wave just a little bit so this is frequency modulation that we just did here as you can hear we have a lot of harmonics up in the higher regions so to fix that i'm going to hold alt here and when you hold alt it allows you to insert modules in between uh modules so i'm going to click here and add in a filter just adjust according to taste. So now that removes some of the higher upper harmonics. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this output here and turn up the release just to get a more pad-like sound. So now you can kind of just go through, adjust the knobs and tweak things to your liking, to your taste. So maybe we'll turn up the drive a little bit, bring down the cutoff. Maybe move the frame of the wavetable. So ever so slightly at the beginning of the sound, you can hear this transient, this uh, tiny clicking noise, and we don't want that. Uh, so to remove that, we can just increase the attack a little bit. Okay, now here's where some of the magic happens. We're gonna turn on unison. Now if I press a note, you can hear it kind of pulsating in a, a very interesting way, which is a good thing, I think. Um, and then we're going to boost up the spread to really make it nice and wide. Now just adjust and mess the parameters to your taste, whatever you think sounds best. Next, we're going to add some reverb. As you can see in the send two, it's going to lane one. So in lane one here, I'm just going to add in a reverb. Turn up the mix all the way. And then I'm just gonna mess around with the early and the dampen uh, size and all these knobs until I get a character that I really like. Okay, so while messing around with some of these knobs, I noticed that kind of tweaking the cutoff while I play a chord sounds really good. So I'm gonna modulate the cutoff here with a random module. So if I click here, search random, get that here. Let's turn up the smooth all the way and I'm just gonna click the plus button here and modulate the cutoff just ever so slightly, maybe like 20%. Uh, and as you can see now it's moving randomly. And if we wanna speed this up, we can just turn up the Hertz here. Just gives it a little bit more organic characteristic. Okay, we're not quite done yet. I'm gonna rename this group to main. I'm gonna add another group here and we're gonna call this one uh, synth. And we're going to add in another wave table and then we're going to uh, search for marimba. So I really like the marimba wave table. I think it sounds really good, especially when you're using it to layer underneath a pad sound. Anyways, in the top right hand corner, I'm gonna mute the main synth or the main group here so we can just hear the marimba sound. And as you can hear, we're actually not getting any audio and that's because we need to add in an output. Now we can actually hear that sound. And as you can hear too, it's going to that reverb, which I don't want. I'm gonna send it to lane two so we just have it completely dry. 
And another thing I'm going to do also is I'm going to uh, set lane one here. I'm going to send the lane one to straight to lane three. And I'm going to do the same for lane two. Send it straight to lane three. All right, I'm just going to scan the wavetable now for a position I like. All right, I like this position. It doesn't sound like much, but when I turn on the main synth and have this playing at the same time, it just gives a little bit more character to the pad, you know? Okay, as you can hear too, we're also clipping a little bit. So to fix that, I'm going to add a compressor on uh, the master channel or on the on lane three rather. And bring down the threshold ever so slightly. Okay, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the main. So I just hear the marimba synth. I'm going to add a little bit of release to it and a little bit of attack to remove that click. And then I'm gonna add its own reverb too, on lane two. Just messing, just again, tweaking the knobs to my own liking. There's really no right or wrong answer. One thing I do wanna do is cut out a little bit of the low end. It is sounding a little bit muddy, so I'm gonna hold alt here. And in between the output and the wavetable, I'm just going to add a filter. I'm going to change this to the uh, high pass. And then I'm just going to bring it to maybe like 150 hertz around that area. All right, let's hear how it sounds all together now. Okay, another thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to minimize these two groups. And then I'm going to add another group. We're going to call this one noise. And I'm going to add in a sampler and let's give it an output too. Now there's this really cool splice sound pack called Sick Volume 3 Dark Places. I'll have a link to this in the description, but it has a lot of really cool environmental ambient sounds. Like this one sounds really cool. I'm going to download this. This one also sounds really cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that environmental sound. We'll try this one first. And I'm just going to drag it into the sampler. And uh, let's mute these so we just hear the, the sample by itself. Also make sure you have a loop turned on. You can start in a different place. Let's turn the crossfade up too. All right, now let's play it all together, see how it sounds. Okay, so first thing I notice is there's too much high-end content, so I'm going to add in a filter, uh, just cut out some of the high-end. Alright, I want to also cut out a little bit of the low-end on this sound, so let's add in another filter, make it a high-pass, and just bring it about there. Let's see. This is also going to lane one. Let's bring it to lane, uh, let's bring this to lane three. Turn down the gain. And let's also turn up the attack, like a lot. So yeah, that's another really cool tip for designing pads or any lush atmospheric sound is to layer environmental noise uh, within the sound. It gives it a really organic feel and it gives it a lot of character too. So let's try this other sample that we got, this one. Drag that in. So if you have a loop mode turned on and you have it set to infinite, this bar right here, this represents the loop point where the sound is going to loop. So if I make this really short and at the start here, you can see it starts and then it begins to loop right there. And there's a little bit of a cutoff noise that you can hear. Like you can hear that it's looping. So to fix that, we can just turn up the crossfade. And that just kind of smooths out the sound. But anyways, let's, uh, let's make the loop point like maybe over here and just make it really long. Can bring in some of the low end with our cutoff here. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time just tweaking the knobs to my desire. Uh, here's what we got now. So not much of a change, just making small tweaks to the reverb, uh, you know, the gain. One thing I do want to do before I end this video is um, let's add some unison to the noise. Give it two voices and then turn up the spread just to make it more wide. 
And then also let's add a little bit of resonance by turning up the Q button here. And what's cool is if I play a chord here and I mess with this cutoff filter, you get this really cool sweeping effect with the noise. If I exaggerate the, re the resonance and turn this up a lot, then you can really hear what it's doing. All right, next I'm gonna create an LFO. Uh, by default, it is a uh, bipolar LFO. And what that means is you can see the range is from negative one to one. Uh, if we switch it to unipolar, then it's from zero to one, which is what we want. So we're gonna leave it on unipolar. We're going to link this to the cutoff. Um, and let's just do maybe like, again, 20%. Uh, actually, let's go up to like 40%. And I'm gonna adjust the cutoff here. And as you can see, it's not really taking effect, but if I play a note, you can see the LFO is now been uh, enacted. Also, instead of a sine wave, let's go to a triangle wave. And then let's slow this down like a lot. All right. Another thing I want to do is I notice that when the LFO does get up to the higher frequencies, um, the noise is a little bit too loud. So we can automate the gain of the noise uh, to turn down ever so slightly once we get to the its peak. So let's just bring it down maybe like 10%, negative 10%. And then if I right click here, you can get more precise. So I can do like negative 15. All right, another thing I'm gonna do is in lane one, I'm gonna add a flanger and let's uh, mute everything else. Let's minimize and mute the noise in the synth just so we hear this. Turn up the rate, the depth. Again, just tweak it to your own preference. I'm just doing what I think sounds best. Another thing I'm going to link this LFO to is the cutoff of the main synth here. So as the LFO increases, I want the cutoff to increase ever so slightly as well. Maybe let's try 50%. I'm also going to link the drive to the same LFO. Bring it up a little bit. I'm going to link the LFO also to the early section on the reverb here. I'm going to start it up here. And then I'm going to bring it down probably, yeah, let's do 80%. And there really is no like methodology to why I'm choosing to automate certain parameters. I'm really just going through tweaking parameters and then noticing like, oh, this sounds really cool when I move it uh, and then linking it to the LFO. <laughs> Now this pad is really starting to come to life. Okay, I do think there's a little bit too much low end on the main synth right here. So I'm gonna add in a filter and just cut out some of the low end. Okay, so we cut out the low end uh, because the low end was sounding really muddy. So to compensate for that, let's add in another group. Let's call it sub and let's actually add in like a sub. Let's add in a wavetable and an out. And let's bring it to lane two again. I'm gonna hold alt here, click and add in a filter and let's just cut out the high end. Bring down the cue. And then let's add in another filter, um, make it a high pass filter and just cut out ever so slightly the, uh, the low end. And let's bring up the slope too, just to make it a more steep curve. And let's cut it around like maybe 35 hertz. That's too much of a cut. Let's bring down the Q, get that low end in, yeah. And then I'm gonna go to my favorites. Um, and I really like the AM sign, that sounds really good too. All right, now let's add it in with the main and everything else. See how it sounds.
Okay, the pad is sounding really good now. To just finalize everything, let's add on a Slice EQ to the third lane. Slice EQ is an additional add-on that you have to buy. It's about $80, but I do recommend it. I use it quite a lot in order to just like fine tune my sounds. Anyways, let's boost the high end. Cut out some of the mids. Take out some of the low end a little bit. So there you guys have it. That's the final pad. Um, as you can see, it's using up quite a bit of CPU. So this is a pretty CPU intensive sound design tutorial. But anyways, I hope you guys learned something new about phase plan, about sound design and how to design pads from scratch. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out my other content if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.